So in today's video, that garage is going to be powder coating the valve cover on the Civic. Let's get started with this process. My buddy Aubrey at that garage, he's actually going to be powder coating this red. So I'm actually going to be stripping all of this paint off using aircraft uh, paint remover. Really strong stuff. Make sure to wear gloves. I don't have any gloves currently, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. I have a scraper so we can actually scrape it off. Um, and we got some rags and stuff. But basically I'm going to apply that over this. Let it do its job. Heat actually activates it really well so if you have like a heat gun and you're in a well ventilated area you can heat up the aircraft stripper and it'll help peel the paint quicker um, but I'm gonna get this down to bare metal before we take it to him he's gonna be powder coating and we're gonna be going over the powder coating so I'm gonna go ahead and get started doing that If you guys listen closely, you can hear the little Visco girls in there going sk, 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 sk. Just kidding. But anyways, I'm going to use the heat gun real quick and speed this process up. All right, there it is, all the way down to the bare metal, just using the aircraft stripper. Um, it works really well. And uh, I had a throwaway toothbrush. It's just a cheap one from Dollar Tree. It helped a lot getting in all these spots and just scrubbing with the toothbrush. A wire brush would have worked a little better, but that's all I had, so they're a dollar, so they're cheap. But this right here is ready to go. After I was done with the aircraft stripper, I got a bucket full of uh, soapy water and put it in there and scrubbed it with it in there just to get all the debris off of it and it's looking pretty good so we'll go ahead reinstall this back on the car and we'll drive it over to that garage uh, link will be in the description for that youtube channel definitely want to give him a follow but uh, we're going to go over there and then uh, get this thing powder coated all right so we're over here at that garage um, we're going to get the powder coating done so i got to take this off and then uh, after i get that off we'll go over some details Okay, so I took the valve cover off and then he actually told me that I need to get the car out of here because I didn't even think about it with powder coating. So we're just gonna push this back out in the street and this car here is gonna move because when that powder starts laying down, um, at least here in Texas where it gets really hot, uh, the powder coat will actually bake into your paint and I can't exactly wet sand and buff the uh, you know, bed liner. So I should have done this out in the street, but it's fine. This car is pretty light, so we can just push it back. Uh, basically, we're just getting it cleaned up. I'm going to show you guys how to powder coat this or I'm going to show you the process in powder coating it. The the big issue you're going to hear and I'm probably, we're probably going to see it on the page <laughs> is some pro powder coater has got this badass shop or whatever is going to tell you it's not sandblasted. Let me correct you. It does not need to be sandblasted. The sandblasting helps tremendously, but it does not need to be sandblasted. So if anybody tells you any pros, yes, you should sandblast it. Yes, I usually do sandblast it. But we're not going to do that today because I'm showing you guys how to do this on a budget. And not everybody can, you know, have a sandblast in their goddamn garage. So, oh, squeaking. But the squeak! <laughs> no. So basically, we're going to show you guys how to coat it. Just got to get down to metal, make sure that everything's off of it. And then uh, we're going to tape it up here shortly. And then we'll show you the rest. Sounds good yeah. to me. So basically, you want to get all the grease off. I mean, there's a shit ton of grease that's been caking on. Surprisingly, his inside is not bad at all so uh, we're lucky there but you want to try and get all the grease off wherever it's going to be coating uh, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to do an outgassing process we're going to put it in the oven and let it outgas for a little bit since this is a part that catches a lot of oil uh, when these these aluminum mixed alloy parts <clears throat> they uh they have oxygen molecules in them so basically what happens is is once it heats up <laughs> It becomes porous and it will it will soak up the oil. So you want to get it going as much as possible. So we're gonna outgas it inside, burn off all the oil, and then we're gonna coat it. So that's what we're doing now. 
Also on his channel, he's showing how to build one of these. This is actually out of a filing cabinet. Um, it may sound ghetto, but it works. So that's all that matters in the end. But uh, it's really cool because it's just an old filing cabinet. So definitely check out his channel. It's That Garage. It'll be in the description. So definitely go after you watch this video and subscribe to him because he's going to have way more content coming out. Um, I want to show you what's right behind me, but I don't want to reveal it. <laughs> you can't. So, okay, well, he's, he gave me the approval. So he's uh, stancing this thing out. Um, it, it actually sat up a lot higher. So if you guys really want to see this power wheel build, this thing's going to be really cool though because he's going to up the... Uh, up the batteries and all that good stuff so definitely stay tuned to that he's also the one that has the nsx in case you guys were wondering um he's the one that has that green nsx which i'll put a clip here of let me tell you i did own a powder coating shop i've been powder coating for over 10 years now yes i am washing this on a trash can yes we built this oven out of a filing cabinet and uh yes i understand this is not how a proper powder coating session should go, but this is how we're gonna do it, just so I can show you that it works, guaranteed. And it can be done. I started hitting my garage with a uh, rotisserie chicken, like, <laughs> oven thing, doing bike parts, right? So it, it works, it can, it can go down like this, you don't need to have all these expensive things. I'm showing you that now, and I guarantee the last years, if you do it correctly, so. Yep, and that's what we're all about, is saving some money here. That's what this channel is really designed around, is saving everyone money and DIY and how-to stuff. And that's also what his channel is going to be about, but he's also going to have a bunch of other cool stuff. He's going to blow some stuff up. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not going to go into details about that yet, so if you guys want to see some cool stuff, definitely uh, subscribe to his channel. So I'm going to let him continue cleaning that, and then whenever we go to the taping process, we'll, uh, we'll come back. Um, this is not how it will hang. We're going to try and make it as even as possible. Um, I can usually I'll use the gate. I'll put I'll put the valve cover on the the gate, but we're gonna hang it today. So that's how he's gonna hang it for now. It won't be hung like that, like he said. Um, so he's basically just gonna heat this up to get all the pores open up, make sure there's no oil in them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this isn't done yet. Obviously, he helped me with the uh, first video. I actually got this. So I got two PIDs. So don't anybody that's like I know I'm gonna get them, man. Oh, that's not a professional setup. This is a junction box. Uh, we're gonna put two PIDs in here, two heat sinks and two toggle switches to turn it on and off. And we're gonna mount it on the side of the oven. Uh, be a little bit official. So, I don't wanna <laughs> hear it. I don't wanna squeak and hear it. Got pro powder coaters out there. I've been working for industrial coaters for 20 years and I ain't never seen no Well, that's cause you ain't never tried no squeaker. Come see me. <laughs> Get these hands. No. <laughs> so he just pulled it out. He's over here. Well, he let it cool down a little bit. He didn't just pull it out. He's not like got super, super touch or whatever. <laughs> I wish. But uh, yeah, he's just gonna use some painters tape to tape the uh, parts up that need taped up. The important parts. He does have the high heat tape, um, but we figured we'd just use this. More people can relate to this painters tape they can get at Walmart or you know wherever. Home Depot. So painter tape you'll you'll put on, cut out obviously all the stuff you need to cut out, and then uh, once you get it back up the tent, when we hot coat it because we're hot coating it today, you get it up the tent, and we're gonna coat it, and immediately once you coat it, you'll start seeing the powder flow, and then you can take off the tape for the final curing process. All right. With the heat tape, you can just put it back in the oven, and you you're good to go. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll go over the uh, rest afterwards. So, uh, you guys, I just wanna clear this, this up a little bit. This is strictly a DIY garage, whatever you can find type of build. I don't wanna hear no <laughs> comments and if you do, great, we'll squeak and get at it. So, <laughs> grounding rod, boom. Copper wire, boom. Speaker wire. That's all I had, right? So we're gonna go ahead and ground out the part with this. And obviously we have our powder coating system grounded out to the grounding rod as well, just cause it's the most powerful ground we got. And we're good to go. I have my Spectra coat right here. And at the end of the video, we'll go through some of the, the different equipments you can get uh, for all the way from hobbyist to pro. And 
obviously we it, the whole project has been this so we are going to coat it right here on the ground hey it's more grounding right <laughs> um i'm going to show you guys you can do this and it can come out amazing you just got to be kind of careful when you're dealing with the the parts themselves especially picking it up from the ground and hanging it in the in the uh, oven usually i would hang it from the garage door up here uh, but the angles that I want to get at are I want, really want to make sure that this wrinkle red covers really well. So um, If you get in the comments, please expect some back because it's coming just playing. So yeah Built oven scraps and some Home Depot shit. didn't skip out on the PID Go over that as well. It's on my channel. So you guys can go check that out uh, Spectra coat grounding rod and a garage floor <laughs> Let's get at it all right, so he put the valve cover in there, it's hanging up, heating up, and as soon as it's ready to come out, basically just gonna put it right over here on the ground and uh, get to it over here. All right, so just a quick note, make sure to wear a proper respirator and stuff like that. He's already taken somewhat uh -huh. pre precautions, but- It does not help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he got it right out of there while it's hot, so he's basically gonna go ahead and coat it. Shit, man. Let's ground it out, sir. Hey, it works, it works. It works. I'll show you. All right, guys. So, as you can see, it worked well. Um, one thing I want to note out is that we aren't using a mill thickness gauge today. Um, I've been doing this long enough, I kind of know uh, how to gauge it. Um, if you want to do it proper, proper, you can get a mill thickness gauge. They're not too expensive, but they're expensive enough to, to you know, to the hobbyist that it won't. It won't really matter. You can just coat. Make sure you got a good coat on there. You saw me pull out the light. You want a nice bright light to see if you see any transparency. If you do, add some more. Um, you saw me adjust my KVs. Um, this is on the, the the more expensive guns. <clears throat> you can adjust the KVs if it's not laying right. You're working with a certain alloy. You can uh, adjust the KVs. Another thing I want to note that we didn't do was we did not tape the underside. I know I'm going to hear it in the comments. So let me just God say it right now. <laughs> We did not tape the underside. You'll hear the pros say it all the time. Oh, you gotta tape up the whole thing. Cool. When I'm doing a customer's shit, yes, we do. We'll tape it up. You know what I'm saying? If it's that big of a deal, no, it will not chip off. And and going to your valves or your lifters, I hear this all the time. Um, but this, again, is a DIY in the garage. If you wanna tape it up, then tape it up. We just decided not to tape it up today. We're gonna show you this works and we're going to show you how to get it done quickly and cheap so right now we're going to take off the tape and we're going to put it back in the oven so you get these textured uh, powders and <clears throat> there's more than one there's different types of textures uh, the, the texture ones especially with wrinkle if it's not laid on pretty thick if it's not at the right mill thickness um, it will not wrinkle or it'll wrinkle a little bit and not wrinkle like we're used to in the Honda world which is pretty damn wrinkly um, <laughs> Even then, that being said, you can't expect it to be exactly like Honda's wrinkle because they do not release their, their powder uh, formula. So you, you can only hope for the best. You know what Get I mean? it close. It's recreated. Like, this is not called Honda Wrinkle Red. We call it that 
in the powder world because when people ask for it, this is exactly what we go to. People, customers will ask for Honda Wrinkle Red. This is actually technically called Hacienda Wrinkle Red. Uh, so there's that. If you want to go check that out, it's on prismaticpowders.com. It's a very good quality uh, powder coating powder company that provides great colors. Go check it out. Cool. All right, there it is. Hang it up. So now we just let it do its thing. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to point something out to you guys. When you are curing, uh, you will have to open up the oven or whatever it is you have that you built as an oven, and you will have to check the temperature of the part. The temperature of the oven, let's say we're trying to get to 400 degrees. Right now we're trying to get to 400 degrees at part temperature, which is why we have this nifty little thing right here. You can get those at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, I think this one cost me like 15 bucks because it was on sale. Yeah, Harbor Freight's got all the good deals. So you're trying to get the actual, I mean, you're trying to get the oven to 400, but you want the part to get to 400 because that's your curing temperature. Once the part gets to 400, that's when you start your curing time. So right now we, we want it to sit at 400 for about 12 minutes. The part has to actually get to 12 or 400 first. So even if the oven gets to 400, that's not part temperature. Make sure, just wanna make sure that's thrown out there because you might get some under cured or over cured powder. And then you're getting on my page and I'm gonna have to blast. So, <laughs> you know. You see it starting to flow. It's not as powdery anymore. Yeah, let me let me put on a light for you. I'm letting the temperature out, unfortunately, but we are sitting at 223. So we're we're getting there. It's starting to flow out, and then uh, once it reaches that 400, it'll start to wrinkle, and then we'll be good in golden. We're gonna let it sit for 12 minutes at 400, and it'll be good. Good thing about it is once it cools down, you can bolt it right the f back up and drive off and squeak. <laughs> about the people asking about a normal stove what would you say about a that? normal stove so okay so a normal stove man so much easier than the bigger ones the the ovens you got the you have racks it's easy to set things on the racks especially uh valve covers you can literally coat on the rack so you take the rack out place it wherever you want to place it coat it put it back in it's easy it it's it takes less time as well because it's not as big so the coils didn't need to heat up the whole box so it takes less time. So if you want to do it, if you're if you're literally not going to do wheels, if you're not going to do anything chassis wise or you know do big control arms and stuff like that, I'd say if you can find a Craigslist oven for about fifty bucks, knock them out, man. You can make uh, what I used to do with cake, pick cake sheet pans. If you want to do bolts and stuff like that, is I'll drill through the, the the cake pan. That way, there's no powder on the, obviously on the on the uh, threads, and then you can coat the top of them just like that. So um, it's really good, man. These, the, the, it's really easy to work with these ones. It's kind of hard with the bigger oven, but um, <clears throat> it's definitely doable, especially if you want to do wheels and stuff. So good to know. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna ask that, so I figured I'd yeah for sure I'd ask you what you thought. So. Yeah, I love them. Well, we're gonna go ahead and let this heat up. Probably go grab some Taco Bell. Hell yeah, All right, guys, it's coming out of the oven, jinkly. Of course, but it is fully cured. 400 degrees, 12 minutes. Uh, let's get this thing out of here, shall we? Now it is fully cured. So it's not like when you first coated it, you couldn't touch it and all that other stuff. You could literally bang this thing around and it'll be just fine. We're just not gonna do that because we take care of our things kind of. <laughs> so let's just set this right here. And there you have it. I'm not going to touch the wires until it cools down. It's pretty hot. It's not squeaking hot. Looks really good. I like that like sparkle it has, that, that look to it. Yeah. And it's wrinkled. You got your phone there, uh, Casey and Jordan? After it cools down, we'll go ahead and take the wires off, and then we'll uh, put it back on the car, see what it looks like with everything in. Oh, yeah. All right, so we got the valve cover put back on. As you can see, it looks really good. It has a really nice sparkle to it. Now, it's not super wrinkled like um, the 
factory. factory. Like he had said previously that this isn't the uh, factory formula, which they won't release. So it does look really good though, and I think it breaks up the engine bay very well between the purple, blue, yellow, and green. That red was what was missing because we do have red in all of this, um, in the puzzle pieces too, there was red. So it was definitely missing, and I think it looks really good. I just want to give a shout out to that garage for hooking me up and showing everyone how to do this and giving you some real results off of doing it the ghetto way. Yeah. I mean, it works, and that's all that matters to us. Um, there is a lot of other ways to do this, so I'm sure we'll see that in the comment section. But this is the way that works for really cheap, um, for us at least. I mean... You know, this is material that he had left over laying around, so we just did it. So, just wanted to say thanks again for that. And uh, definitely check his channel out. Um, he's going to have more videos coming out about that. So, definitely stay tuned to his channel and stay tuned to this channel. And maybe we'll get some more stuff powder coated in the near future. So, uh, if you guys like the video, definitely hit the like button. Subscribe to both channels. Links will be in the description for uh, some of the stuff that was used today. Uh, I'll try to get that info from him. So we can put it down there so you guys can uh, start getting some stuff done. Now I think he wanted to say something about uh, guns, cheap guns that you can start with. So, Hey guys, Supercar <laughs> Viking here. You know what it is. So the gun I used today was a Special Coat ESO2. That's going to run you anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 with the Faraday Waveboard. Um, you can do your research on that. Uh, if you're just doing this in your garage and you happen to have... A regular kitchen oven and you're just trying to do a couple parts here and there valve covers nothing huge then you should be good with the Chicago electric uh, hobbyist gun that's like a hundred bucks <clears throat> uh, it's equivalent to the uh, Harbor Freight one but I would not go with the Harbor Freight I mean you can do it and I'm not telling you what to do uh, but you can definitely go with that if you want to step your game up just a little bit or you want to skip the hobbyist portion where it's a little bit harder to work with the powder then you can move on up to the Spectra Coats. You don't have to run with the ESO2. The ESO2 that I have here, uh, you can change your your cleansing air, your your KVs. It has a Faraday wave board and all that other fancy stuff that us coders use. Um, but they do have the ESO1. You probably get it for about 400 bucks, maybe used 200. Um, if you're really trying to get into it and do all do the whole you know Need for Speed cruise cars so um, as you can see here it worked well we had a cheap oven a cheap gun well per se we had great powder and we prepped it very well it all comes down to the prep game and and how how well you execute and we executed pretty good today as you can yeah see. and he didn't use the cheap powder from ebay because he no. actually told me about that yeah sorry i did not say that so ebay i would i would i would definitely uh just be cautious if you're going to order order from there. Coat a, a panel or a, a pan or something and see how it flows out, see how it, it reacts. I don't like using eBay stuff. It's, it's not that great. There's prismaticpowders.com that I order from. ColumbiaCoatings.com, amazing as well. They have stuff, uh, unique things that I like to buy there like marble, granite, which I did on a K-series valve cover. Look awesome. Looks like granite countertop is great and I keep squeaking this up so <laughs> you're gonna be cutting a lot so uh, uh, check those two sites out if you want to look at some coat some powder coats if you want to look at powder um, and obviously you can catch the rest of my video how to build the powder coating oven how to hook up the PIDs to get the junction box done and how to wire everything up and we can go from there yeah it looks really good um... Maybe thinking of doing some other things in the future. Not, not exactly sure yet, but we could uh, go over more of those details at, once we figure all that out. But um, if you guys are new here, definitely consider subscribing. Definitely hit the like button, drop me a comment, and let me know what you guys think of how awesome this turned out. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay safe and God bless.